My name is Daniel Vandiver and I'm the Communications Director for Navajo Technical University. I'd like to welcome you to the grand opening of our academic building at our Chinle instructional site. Under normal circumstances, we'd be joined together in celebration of the progress our Chinle site has made over the past 14 years, which is a history built off of hard work and determination. But for the safety of us all, we're coming to you virtually from Crown Point, Chinle, Albuquerque, and Phoenix. Today is an important day for NTU, but it's also an important day for the Chinle community, the state of Arizona, and the Navajo Nation. Our 20,000 square foot academic building will serve as our foothold into the state of Arizona and will catalyze our site into a branch campus. As we grow into this new phase of our life, we will also grow academ new academic programs, new infrastructure, and expand the Navajo Nation's horizon to be inclusive of economic and academic opportunities. With this opening, possibility is endless. So without further ado, we welcome you. Hello everybody, my name is Wyoming Cook and I'm a senior at Central High School in Phoenix, Arizona. And today I will be singing the national anthem for you in Navajo. Good afternoon. My name is Marvin Nez, controlling manager of Nez FCI. Kia ani en shlan tloge e bashishin tohe linie yada shinale. Kachi mine tote ne yada shinche utai de nen shlan. I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the uh, 2,000 or 20,000 square foot instructional building that we've recently built out in Chin Li for Navajo Technical University. And the um, type of delivery method that was used for this project was construction manager at risk, meaning that um, we were hired on early uh, in the pre-construction phase, um, along with the team, which is uh, IDSA, uh, the architect for this particular project and the owner and in helping them um, arrive to uh, a GMP, which is the guaranteed maximum price. And soon after we were hired on as the GC for uh, this particular project, uh, we were the general contractor and uh, brought on and uh, you know, broke out this uh, um, 
project into um, several phases, three to be exact, and then there's some other additionals, but the three main ones. The first one was, of course, the uh, uh, pre-construction. The second was the uh, site work with the infrastructure, and then thirdly was the uh, actual building itself. Um, were there challenges with the project? Um, yes, there's always challenges with any uh, construction project or any project. Uh, however, um, you know, having a great team, uh, we were able to um, uh, overcome some of these challenges. And the team includes NTU, um, and then the, our, our architects as well, uh, IDSA, uh, Tamara McGay and, and, her, uh, and her team, um, along with us, uh, you know, communicating and navigating through and trying to um, get the RFIs answered as quickly as possible. And of course, uh, you know, working with the uh, authorities having jurisdiction which include um, the Navajo Uti Tribal Utility Authority, um, uh, water resources from the Navajo Nation, um, and the Navajo Nation uh, Fire Department, um, and then other agencies, uh, entities like Frontier, uh, as well as Navajo EPA. Um, so all of those, yeah, you know, it, it, there was some challenges, but like I say, we managed to work through them. Uh, I believe land withdrawal, uh, you know, it didn't really pose a problem. NTU did their homework um, prior, and, uh, but towards the end there, you know, of uh, phase two, which is the site work, we needed to uh, get some uh, right-of-ways in place, and uh, Ms. Bo Benali, or Lena Benali was crucial in those efforts to help us um, obtain these uh, right-of-ways so we can get the infrastructure portion of the project in and keep us on uh, on schedule. Now, for the uh, on how we're feeling about near completion, um, just ecstatic about the uh, project. First off, just thank you to Dr. Guy and his leadership and staff at NTU for having us as the CMGC uh, to be a part of this team. And you know, just uh, we've done several projects and continue to do projects on, on Navajo um, in education and higher education. So us participating, um, you know, anything that we can contribute to the Navajo Nation's uh, youth and, and getting their um, education in place for um, you know the next step of education, which is higher education and ultimately, you know, hitting the, uh, the um, job force. So anything that we can help to um, make these uh, buildings um, comfortable, um, there's always the HVAC, you know, aspect of a building, of course the architecture, and again, you know, just, uh, it's a beautiful building. Um, you know, the speech was given the other day about it being the cornerstone um, and we're just uh, blessed to be have part taken in this project and uh, thank you to uh, IDSA, thank you to uh, NTU and of course last but not least thanks uh, to uh, our team and as always um, you know uh, thank you to the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Theodore Edekai, and I am an architect here at Indigenous Design Studio Plus Architecture. Uh, we incorporated culture within this building's design from the small scale up to the large scale. Um, and so we did that in as many places as we could, but where it started out with in the, in the design process is we looked at how is the building oriented within the community itself. How is it relating to the different views, the directions, the sun movements, and the canyon de shade, which is a very important landform in Navajo culture. Um, next from there, we looked at how is this building telling a story of Navajo creation stories and emergence? How is this building looking like it's growing up out of the ground, recognizing that this is the first building on this new 38-acre site? And lastly, just looking at the idea of protection and nurture. 
thinking about how students and staff are going to be coming here and we want to nurture that kind of intellect that they're growing within this campus and looking at how this building can become that place where it's going to provide for the staff and students and even bridging over into how we use different building materials with sustainability and high performance uh, building skin. Well, all these ideas that we took from Navajo design and planning, we really tried to blend those with contemporary ideas of design and tried to make this building something that's going to really catch the eye as you're driving past it on the road, but also something that's going to become a beacon for Navajo Technical University to point to and say, this is how we're moving our staff and students into the next generation and how it's going to really show people that NTU can provide world-class facilities not only within the region but on the Navajo Nation and throughout the country. And part of that was just trying to show how we can do really great things with the expression of the building. So how we started to do that was by looking at the building materials and the exterior. And uh, part of the building we have this aluminum composite panel system which is a rain screen system and in architectural terms it means that it's really shading the building skin and it's going to perform really well. But at the same time, we really tried to make that system emulate Canyon de Chez and the rock layers as if you're standing on the inside of the canyon. You're looking up at these walls and you feel the sense of scale and you feel these striations and patterning in the rock and that's what we wanted this building to feel like. And lastly, another unique feature about this building is just this great double height space that we have as kind of the centerpiece of this whole building design. And when you walk into the building, you feel welcomed and you feel like, again, that concept of nurturing within this new building. But this space is really comfortable because of the lighting that we have. This, this space has these angled walls and this perforated metal screening, which on the inside cuts out all the glare and is great for uh, for the lighting performance, but when you're on the outside of the building and you're driving past or somebody standing outside, it really creates this dynamic movement of rhythm and motion and harmony that kind of guides your eye up towards the sky. Yate tamar bige yenche nai kaiten enche kia ani bashichin ashi dashanali tofuglini dashache. Hello, my name is Tamara Bigay, and I am the principal in charge and founder and owner of Indigenous Design Studio Plus Architecture. I am originally from Ayumbato, which is about 50 miles east of Gallup, New Mexico. Um, grew up there, and I went to um, Gallup, Gallup High, and then I went to the University of New Mexico to receive my undergrad and master's degree in architecture. So this is really exciting um, for the firm. Um, we are eight years old. We are also a 100% Navajo women-owned architectural and planning firm. And our firm is 100% indigenous staff. Um, the only firm, um, not just in the country, but in the world, that we do have um, a whole 100% indigenous staff um, that works on numerous pro projects, not just throughout Navajo, but throughout, throughout the country. Well, in 2015, um, IDSA was hired by NTU to complete a master plan for their new 35-acre site in Chinle, Arizona. So the process was um, unique. We did um, use Navajo planning principles um, as a guideline and as well as the community participatory planning process that IDSA uses, which includes um, looking at working with the local community and then also looking at um, embracing um, a lot of the community members, the staff, the, and the faculty throughout the process. During that process, we basically just listen to the client. And um, part of that process is they're going to tell us stories about the community, um, about you know what the what they want the campus to be, some of the history, the culture, the language, and traditions around the whole campus. Um, our part um, for um, the campus master plan was just to listen and we actually come up with a vision and a mission statement based off of the, the participants um, words. So our mission that we came up with with NTU by just listening to their stories was to create a state of our campus 
that embraces the new resilient community culture through Diné philosophy and a lifelong learning that will foster the Navajo tradition, their pride, sustainability, technology, and economic development really at the heart of Chinle and the Navajo Nation. So that was really the mission that we worked with um, by listening to the stories of the students, the faculty, and community to come up with the master plan. And since this master plan is going to be really the seed for all the future buildings, which is going to be really important um, for the process. So along with coming up with um, the mission statement, um, we um, started with the site analysis. Um, site analysis, we also looked at um, infrastructure. We looked at the existing communities, all part of our process, um, you know, to get as much data and information um, that we can to start looking at concepts. We came up with um, three concepts. Um, the three concepts included um, the canning, the mesa, and the river concept. So these three concepts um, were, <clears throat> were specific to um, a lot of the stories that we heard um, for um, the, the campus master plan. Um, with those three concepts, um, <clears throat> NTU decided to select um, several, which included the river, as well as the mesa, and as well as the canyon. There was three significant um, aspects of each of those that they wanted to include as part of the overall um, campus master plan. Um, the campus master plan, if you look at it um, um, in terms of um, scale, site planning, location, um, you start to see um, the evolution of some of the history that you see in um, Chinle, which is the Canyon de Chez. Um, you start looking at the river concept where the river flows into the campus and the center part and the nodes um, are part of the seed of growing NTU. So you'll see that in the landscaping components and the master plan uh, was again 35 acres and that included um, the first classroom building um, on site which is a 20,000 square foot um, facility um, administrative building as well as a student service um, center, um, child care, um, a vendor's market, um, an amphitheater, uh, a traditional Navajo Hogan, apartments, dormitories, townhomes, gym, and trades. So all of this really connected to you know the mission of, of NTU Campus Master Plan. Again, here at IDSA, um, we you know take on more of this you know indigenous um, knowledge of how we used to design our Navajo communities and indigenous communities a long time ago. And that was really part of this community participatory planning process that we listened to everyone's individual stories about what this campus master plan could be, their vision, um, you know, what they wanted to do for the students, for the community. Um, all of that also embedded things um, in terms of economic development. Um, how can we build economic development in the community with this new campus master plan and this single building? And it's going to even evolve today. Um, some of the um, goals were to make a campus that was also secure, um, make a campus that really united the community, um, also looking at having a, a, a community and a master plan that had sustainable components. Sustainable com components included um, PV locations as well as looking at designing buildings that can really embrace the sun and warm up the building during the winter months and then looking at areas on, on the campus master plan where students can take classrooms outdoors. Um, there's a lot of studies out there that when you go outdoors and um, learn and really be at one in the environment students you know have um, you know a better learning ability and um, can embrace a lot of that um, teaching skills, you know, when they're outside. So we hope that NTU um, can really um, evolve this master plan um, to what it should be. We always want to go back to what was designed and what it was planned for, and it was really a campus and a master plan, you know, for NTU, the people in the community um, in Chinle. My name is Jan. Freya and I was the project manager and project architect on this project. NTU did what we like our clients to do. 
they organized a project design team, which was great because it's great to work with a team. It keeps it the process smoother and they kept the team consistent, which is great because they know all the background to the project and that helps to keep it moving. But what they also did was they got several different areas of the university to participate. So we had the user group and the director with uh, Arlena and we had um, somebody that represented the students, Adina's students. We had the professors that were going to work in the building and use the facilities and knew what they wanted. And we also had Tony Major. So all these, all the people working together, they were able to make decisions on how we would move forward. And we had lively discussions about what was needed and um, what we needed to put in and what because we had a lot of ideas. We had a ton of ideas for this project. Uh, but we had to narrow it down so that it would fit in the 20,000 square foot building that you see today. And t the building does represent their values. We went over them in a, in, during the master planning process. During master planning we came up, that's how we came up with the concept for the master plan. Um, we had several sketches, we threw around ideas, and the one that we decided on is where you see the building today, and that, that starts the growth for the rest of the rest of their campus there. The one of the major portions of master planning was the establishment of a vision, um, the mission statement, and what did we base it on. And they had a lot of items that they wanted to include in, in it and as we narrowed it down. Um, we also included their um, principles that for the school itself, which is thinking, planning, life, and achievement. And their, their philosophy is that the student, any student, is able to learn and study and achieve. So we, we had that thought process in mind as we were designing the facility and how it would flow with the students in it and the instructors um, and that it would be a great place to learn, think, uh, experience life um, and achieve their goals because this is just the start of their education. In six, Dr. Guy, you know, wanted a site, wanted a, um, an instructional site here in Chin Lee, so we can offer opportunities to uh, to provide education to local community members and surrounding towns. And uh, we started out this university, this college here back then, with five classes and 30 students. We got the college going in four months with a little over $15,000. $15,000 was, you know, what we had to start this. $15,000 and 14 years later, this is what we have. That is what we have. We also had an opportunity to meet a wonderful family here who had donated land. Again, the Gorman family, thank you very much. And this property that we are sitting on, that we are standing on right now, extends all the way out to where those tires are. And um, we have 38.06 acres. And we, we had decided to build this campus here because we were running out of space. 
We had partner with, when we first started, we partner with the Chinle Unified School District. Quincy Nate, Doug Kloschi, and some of the other leaders, you know, um, here, Joy, Gloria, you know. So all of you were a big part of this. It is the community, the students, you know, that drove us to this level. They, they are the ones, you know, who came to us because we provided that education to them. And when we provided that education to them, we had changed many lives here in Chin Lee. How we have graduated thousands, over a thousand students. All of these students here, all of these students here did not have that opportunity when we weren't even here in the area. These students were afraid to go out to Phoenix. And this is what they were waiting for. This is why we came over, we said, let us help you. I am honored to be on the board for Navajo Technical University. What an honor. I see education from a whole different realm. I was K-12 for 40 years and left the district as an associate superintendent. Uh, was the principal of six schools in the district and also brought them out of uh, underperforming to performing and performing plus. We don't just want mediocre, we want the best. Let's give them the best. This is the best. Let's keep going. Our vice president said, it looks like maybe a compound could be developed. Yes, let's develop that. We have the Gorman family, Foster Gorman. This, his dad said, talk to Foster. And Dr. Guy talked to Foster. And he said, use it. They said, use it for the use of education. Make it happen. And it happened. So, yeah, it's in we, you know. Um, we have, oh, this is a, good situation with the hospital there, housing, the schools, uh, and we need to nurture them, Chin Lee. Attend the meetings, know what's going on with, the, with, with your, with council delegates, with our representatives. Talk to them, what are the needs? Yes, we're in COVID, but what do we do? We cannot just stay in it, we're going to have to be educated about it. So with that kind of knowledge and intents, we were able to path forward. And I want to thank you for coming and you gave up time to come hear some great speeches, some invigorating leadership about, you know, applauding, applauding our university. Let's keep going. Let's keep going, board. We really have a wonderful opportunity to say, okay, what's next? Let's do it for Navajo Technical University. When I was listening into the songs and the prayers this morning. I, I could not help but recall the four elements in what I was taught. Those four basic principles is taught at home. It was taught to me at home by my grandmother Lorraine, the late Lorraine Ta. And then at, at, with my parents, with my mom and Mike Che, Edward Ta. And then again, when I went to college, university, uh, Ember Riddle Aeronautical University, again, those four basic elements were put in my head and remembered, recalled. And I heard that this morning again. In my perspective where I'm sitting and I'm looking at the building, I see two eyes and a mouth. And I see her to give. So in the way that the medicine man prayed and sung this morning is bringing life to the building, giving her a personality, breathing life into her, making her welcome more knowledge, more information, more students in her loving arms. With that, see,
that is still part of this whole event today and how I'm thinking from here on out is just the basic uh, principle of moving forward in progress. So I sincerely appreciate this opportunity. I support NTU, I support the NEC College and all the TCUs in Arizona and the United States. I do believe that NTU is one of four TCUs in Arizona and any effort to support uh, tribal universities and colleges is very important as we teach our culture, our philosophy, and our language, the foundation of who we are. So thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.